unfortunately, the rest of the world really seems to listen to the U.S. laws, and it's extremely frustrating. When we lifted the international ban, I mean, on, excuse me, when we lifted the federal ban on syringes, it made my job a lot easier going to Zanzibar, various places, saying, well, look, now the federal government of the United States agrees with needle exchange. Um, I didn't make too much of that because look what happened. The federal ban is back. It's interpreted in ways Unfortunately, I feel like it's convenience. This allows people that are not sure they want to do needle exchange to say, well, look, the U.S. government doesn't pay for it, so we don't want to do it. We can't do it. There's a lack of understanding that even though there's a federal ban on needles, purchasing needles here, we have federal money at so many of the needle exchanges that is used for other purposes, just not for that moment somebody hands over a needle. But internationally, that is completely invisible. So people feel like, if their agency does needle exchange, they won't be able to receive PEPFAR funding, for example. Whereas, in fact, PEPFAR is very supportive of getting needles out in any way that they possibly can. So, I don't know if, for example, Zanzibar would be doing needle exchange now if the, the ban weren't back, but I know that it's one more reason why they don't need to. Um, I'm glad to see it moving ahead some other places, but it's both an excuse and I think it puts fear into people because so much of aid money is controlled by the United States at this point.